It's been forever since I went live. Oh yeah. I forgot that I did that. This is connected to nothing. I should have added more adlibs to this shit. Enough a day late, but not a dollar short. Christian P and that P stands for I'm probably gonna be late on a lot of stuff, you know. Are the levels my check one two one two? Hello, can you hear me? It's been a while since I streamed. It's been a while. Is Shardy even crunk anymore? Wait, can I play this song? Without getting demonetized. I don't know, it is my track though. I can play this one for sure. Welcome in. Hey look, it's Lux. I'd rather watch you here, glad to see you live. Rosiden. I should read what you put in uh, uh, on the YouTube side. I should read it. It's very racist, man. Ew. Wait, hold on. Why does it look like that? Oh no, they didn't mess up my... Yeah, it did mess with my settings. I downloaded a... Uh, Hold on. How do I fix this shit? Like my YouTube video is just cooked. Yeah. The color on my YouTube video is just fucking cooked. How do I fix this shit? Holy. It's only for... Hold on, is it for this one? Uh, I might have to... Change the input, maybe? This is the latest monitor, too. That'd be sad. Alright, so let's go back to... The display port. Yeah, man. What'd you what? say, baby? Put you in the game. They put me in the game, man. Let me put the video on this is like on. Uh, I might have to close. Fuck. I I think I have to close Chrome. Give me one second. <laughs> Why? This is what happens when you don't stream in a while, like, shit, just, I had to upgrade, like, my, uh, my graphics driver for OBS to work, and now, when I open YouTube videos, the saturation on the YouTube videos is just fucking crazy. Okay, I think it's fine now. That's good to know. I was nervous for a second. Still nervous. You know? Still nervous, man. Showing up on the first page of Google might not be the best. 
edit the video. How are you guys doing though? Thanks for thanks for coming, man. You know, I really appreciate it. Appreciate it dearly. Is it what? How do I get back into the YouTube thing? Oh no. Oh no, customization. Uh. Anyway. Okay, this is the live stream and the YouTube. I feel like YouTube is way more complicated than uh than uh advanced mode, not advanced mode. Okay, if I go to go live, then this ah there it is, there it is. Cool, and then set this back up how it was damn it i had the youtube video queued congrats on the concert lottery thanks man poncho holy moly it's fine boy uh, i never i'm never going away i'm just uh figuring out my life hello everyone hi how are we doing Jeez. hopefully we're doing wait what Jeez. okay how are we doing? We're we doing okay. We're doing okay. We're doing all right. I was trying to set up the OG setup. No, not you, Harvey. Not you. Don't you forsake me. Okay. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? Uh, bro, I haven't streamed in like four score and seven years. I can't even spell my name anymore. I am not in my bag. I feel like sometimes you gotta like pre-stream before the regular stream. You know? Or is it just a capital P I president count president? Say I'm all those. I look like so ratchet eight, but I'll stop your passion. So that's the way she seems like an average day. There's like a color day. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come through. Uh, let's just watch. Where do I go to history? Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Thank you guys for coming. The local friendly neighborhood fan where we are pushing P in a place to be. Uh, I upgraded my uh, NVIDIA driver, oh. and so now the colors are like, let me know, does this look weird to you guys? It's like oversaturated. Drake and Kendrick Lamar. That looks fine to me. Well, at least one of them hates the- Okay, 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 okay. That's fine. I think that's fine. I can be your local friendly neighbor, right? Can I be your local friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Sure, man. Is that what I said? Saga, thank you for the uh yeah, I'm a, I'm going to oh, I'm going to Japan in a month. Let's go, baby. We're gonna go see XG. I haven't watched XG's uh undefeated, I know. My phony. Nothing happening, man. You say fanboy, okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, it's your local friendly neighborhood fan where we're pushing me in the place to be and said, hey, listen, there's a lot of happening in hip hop right now. So I thought it would be uh, really cool to just take a deep dive into the history that is Drake and Kendrick Lamar. This beef goes deep, but we go deeper. No diddy. Let's get into it. Was that an intro? That was an intro, huh? It's been a while. <laughs> take that, take that. Uh, yeah, it's your local. I realized I wasn't recording, so it's your local friendly neighborhood fan. Or we're pushing P Push in a place to be. And today, seeing that hip hop's in an uproar, I think it's time for us to take a deep dive, no diddy, into this Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef and get right back to the start of it. So let's get into it. I like the other intro better. I'm gonna go with the other intro. I'll take it from Twitch. I will take it from Twitch, you know? 
By the way, we're live on both YouTube and uh, Twitch. So, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the good stuff. Let's get into it. Drake and Kendrick Lamar hate each other. Well, at least one of them hates the other person, while the other has tried many times to be friendly mm -hmm. and squash things. One rapper seemed to believe that they were actually friends, while the other looked at their relationship as a business transaction. Damn, so Drake thought they were kumbaya, and then and Kendrick is like, I'm just trying to get on, bro. That's crazy. Drake would be the more emotional of the two. I feel like a lot of this beef stems from Drake being emotional. But if you guys have heard his latest, uh, like, this Drake's AI diss track, it's very good. So, you know, I'm here. I'm not, I pick no sides. I'm on the side of, like, entertainment. Action. After two weeks of research, it's safe to say that one MC has lost every ounce of respect for the other. You guys really liked my last video where I broke down all the subliminal dis- Wait, 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 wait. He has Nipsey, he has Ice Cube, he has Biggie. I don't know who that is. Is that Barry Bonds right there? Nobody likes Drake, actually. That's what you heard? Drake versus everyone. You know what? I want to make the- I want to make the- I'll, I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> Hold on. This is from Drake's new album. So I decided to stick with a similar style. And in my last video, I, I asked you point. guys to hit the like button, which is something I don't usually do, but the video did really well. And I don't know if that's why. He only but has just do me a favor and hit that like button. Barely 200 Thanks. subs. So when it comes K, to Kendrick and Drake, they weren't always on bad terms. Back in 2011, Drake had already blown up. And the editing here is just so good. I, how, do, how, like, how long does it take to get this good at editing? Holy. I like Poetic Justice on Good Kid Max City. Yeah, that was good. But I like I feel like um that was like the only song that Drake could get on, right? And like be adequate with Kendrick. Kendrick had yet to release a major debut album. Now, Kendrick was definitely buzzing, but he was far from the star that Drake was. Even back in 2009, Kendrick mentioned Drake on a track where he pretty much admits that he thinks he's better. Oh, no. Oh, that's an interpolation of um, Kanye West line. Kanye West said, these niggas that much better than me, baby. I'm going on an airplane and don't know when I'll be back again. Sure enough, I bought the same ticket, but when she came to kick it, things became different. Any girl like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys remember that? That was featuring Lupe Fiasco. By the way, have you guys seen the responses from Lupe Fiasco in this whole little beef turmoil? It is wild, bro. He is, he might be a hater. Chuck Skeeter, what's good? Kendrick identified really early on that the mainstream hip hop wasn't really his thing. However, on June 16th, 2011, mm. Kendrick performed in Toronto for the very first time. And when Drake found out he was in the city, he decided to hit him up so that they could meet. I need y'all to know, this is my first motherfucking time out here, you dig? And Kendrick would speak about meeting Drake in a double XL magazine and said, that's a real good dude. He got a real genuine soul. We clicked immediately. And it was during that meeting that Kendrick provided Drake with a copy of his unreleased album, Section 80. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. Olympia fiasco, that's wild. <laughs> Kendrick said that Drake was the first person outside of his team to hear Section 80 and that Drake was blown away by the project. I e yeah, Chuck, he was reaching saying that Drake was better, bro. Better perform... Like, he said Kendrick's a better performer. Like, his performance presence is better, but Drake's a better rapper or some shit. Like, it was wild for a Lupe fiasco of all the people to say that about Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Like, Drake is a better performer. He has more uh, metrics when it comes to album sales and has more um, accolades as far as streaming goes. But Kendrick has more, like, awards, more Grammys in particular. He has a Pulitzer Prize. And the bars, the level of bars, and the... Like, you can teach classes in college. You can teach college courses breaking down Kendrick Lamar's verse. But Drake knows when that hotline blings, you know? Like, come on. Like, stop it, Lupe. Even found a 2011 tweet where anyway. Drake posted Kendrick's lyrics from ADHD. We never do listen unless it comes Agreed, Juan. Drake liked Kendrick's music so much 
that he asked him to be on his upcoming sophomore album, Take Care. The death of me. Throughout the track, Kendrick talks about meeting Drake. Oh, no, I was talking about the guy that made this video. But yeah, he Lupe is tripping. Wait, what were you talking about? Bro was reaching when he was saying Drake was better. Oh, he said, I, I haven't watched this video, so I don't know. Did he say Drake was better? My bad. For the first time, and how he was surprised that Drake wasn't fake like most of the music business. Hit me on the sale, I thought he was going to sell me a fast word like the rappers I know. Hendrick outlines how Drake showed him a taste of what being rich and famous actually looked like. Sat down with a few drinks located where you can't see us. A white waitress on standby. Okay. On the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Yeah, like, damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the lifestyle and would that make me a breaky? And that was what the whole record was about when I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, we could see the difference in these two artists where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life. And Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his, you know, his relationships, his friendships. is interesting because just two or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression the way you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. Did, did the industry cause that? Not not the industry, just the change. Yo, am, am I the only one that noticed that Kendrick Lamar's voice got deeper, bro? Like, holy. Real genuine so Hold much on. admits that he thinks he. Now, Kendrick was definitely buzzing. But he was far from the. Well, but I anyway, yeah. And was that make me a break also, who is this person? Uh, what's the dirt? This is an excellent video. Like we're only two minutes in, and holy, I'm learning so much. And that was what the whole record was about when I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, we could see the difference in these two artists, where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life, and Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his you know, his relationships, his friendships is interesting because just two or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression the way you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. Did, did the industry cause that? Not, not the industry, just the change. And Drake only continues to show Kendrick more love by taking him and ASAP Rocky on his Club Paradise tour. Damn, he did take ASAP and Kendrick on tour, bro. It's kind of crazy now that they're dissing him. Damn. I wonder how Drake feels, right? Like, yeah, I wonder how Drake feels in all this. He's like, bro, I help some of these people out in their their career when they were just starting out. And this is the things I get for them to turn my back, turn their back on me. Holy. If I was Drake, I'd feel, I'd be upset. This is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I'm on this motherfucking club paradise tour, matter of fact. My nigga wow. Drake, TDE, high power in this you know? It's and Drake wild has to see them back then. Drake claimed to have fought with management to take these guys on tour because his label had other plans. Damn. You know, it's people I can put on here that the label wants me to put on here, but I fight for this one reason, man. Like, I fight to promote what I love. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I fight to promote the music that I truly love, so. Drake would mention this again in 2016 on his track 4 p.m. in Calabasas. When he told me take a R and B nigga on the road, and I told him no, and drew for Kendrick and Rocky. However, Ken. What do you think the R and B uh, dude was? You think it was like Trey Songs? Who was popping back then for them to go on tour with Drake? Like Chris Brown? Kendrick's superstardom quickly catches up with Drake as a year later he dropped one of the best Was The weekend even around during Take- yeah, it was Club Paradise The weekend was definitely around because, I mean, Take Care is just The weekend's album, huh? Wow Hip-hop albums of all time, Good Kid Mad City I used to be jealous of Vermin to follow, he was the one to follow And Black Boy Fly is a, a bonus track, but to me that's one of the, the most beautiful songs on that album. Absolutely amazing storytelling. And it was on that album where Drake returns the favor and gives Kendrick a feature on Poetic Justice. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience. And on the day that the album dropped, Drake even posted a tweet saying, congratulations to Kendrick, incredible body of work, honored to be a part of it. However, even at this point, Kendrick and Drake couldn't be more different in terms of how they approach music and life in general. Really, money really don't 
make me. I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my um my peace of mind having money. Man, this is very nostalgic, bro. Like I, I remember, bro, back in 2013, I was <laughs> I was 23, bro. I was flying back and forth to New York. It was great. Hoping to one day live in New York. It was so good. It was so good. And and like these people's albums was like the soundtrack to my experience, my life. Holy. Look how young Kendrick is, bro. We almost got the same haircut. I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love his shoulders? <laughs> I just love her. We're Kendrick and Mark talking about like how money doesn't bring happiness. And here, bro, this is a perfect edit. Greg's just on some red carpet. He's at the Grammy. He's like, hey. Lady Alexa Chung, I love your shoulders. Like, like not a care in the world, bro. I'm he got trouble hearing. Oh, not Can you, you. Say that again? Alexa. Stop, not you, not you. Mm -hmm. Always in the mix, bro. Her shoulders. She's yeah. actually blushing as well. She's no doubt about it. They're just two different guys. Next, we get a bit of an inside look on how Kendrick actually sees Drake as a person. When the legend himself, DMX, claims that I forgot he would about love this. RIP, RIP to Man. DMX. I wish it was like maybe seven years ago. Well, maybe like like ten years ago. Well, you know, catch the elevator, beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few days later, Kendrick was asked about his thoughts on DMX's rant, and he thought it was hilarious, saying that his entire tour boss nearly died of laughter. I wonder why these in the front of the bus just cracking up like oh no balls and shit, just crying I'm like no wait that's dj who kid which is very interesting on the i think now they're saying that drake uh dropping give me 50 is a ai track but it's a dj who kid you can hear his tag in the beginning so i wonder how close dj who kid and drake are because like if drake is a sensitive dude is what i'm getting at and like if he saw this back in the day this right here, DMX might have sparked the Kendrick Lamar and and Drake beef, bro. Because like, I'm gonna let him finish what he's about to say, but like, I don't even remember this interview. You niggas talk about they mute, they stop laughing, right? I just hear X going off on a laptop. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck going on? He's like, yeah, he's going in right now. <laughs> now, nah, this might have started the beef. Hold on. Remember. Drake is pretty sensitive. Right? So if he did see that, right? he probably felt a way about Okay, we so right here. So the two would right work here. together for the very last time on one of 2013's biggest hits, ASAP Rocky's Problems. Wow. Girl, I know you won't did that. Girl, Girl, I'm Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Lamar. Well, that was it. After that, you never see these two. <sighs> he seems very Kendrick Lamar. Oh, we're only, damn, this is a 40 minute video. Global Hooper, what's good? It seems like he's very like Kendrick Lamar, like bias right now. Let's see, let's see if it switches up towards the, the middle part. On a track together again. In 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive between the two because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up and comer, he had become that guy. He's getting a lot of accolades from your peers and the hip hop icons. <laughs> it's Canadian. I love Kendrick Lamar. Number one on that list. Was that Scarface? What's Scarface doing nowadays? Competitive between the two, because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up and comer. Damn, bro, remember? No, never mind. <laughs> never mind, I'm not even gonna go there. Rocky's problems. Girl, I know you won't did that. Girl, I'm, I'm Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Lamar. Well, that was it. After that, you never see these two on a track together again. In 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive between the two. Because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up and comer, he had become that guy. He's getting a lot of accolades from your peers and the hip hop icons. Thank you. Thank you. I love Kendrick Lamar. That is Scarface, right? Or am I tripping? Or is that just some black dude? I don't know. Number one on that list, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? Uh, the, the hip hop savior, it seems like. Woo! And let's not forget, Drake is still Drake. He had a phenomenal year also. Shout out to Hamilton. Shout out to Toronto one time. Like, <laughs> best rap album goes. And they said, take care. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Given the success of both artists, the media and fans started to debate who was better. And Kendrick started off the year with a bang 
when he was awarded MTV's hottest MC in hip hop. Damn, yo, I remember this show, bro, with Sway and all them, bro. MTV's hottest. Yo, I were, oh, yo, this is fire. Big Sean number six, Kanye number seven, Rick Ross number three, Two Chains number two. Damn, 2013 was a wild year. Holy. Hip hop. And we went through about 15 of them, narrowed wow. it down to 10. The 10 became five. Damn, remember when MTV actually, like, you know, cared about music just in general? Those were better days. The five became two. And you, Kendrick Lamar, are the hottest MC in the game, according to the MTV brain. And most of Kendrick's hip hop friends seem to be happy for him. Okay. Are you not happy about that? Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one, K Dot. Kendrick, yes. So I'm straight with that. However, Drake was one person that certainly <laughs> did not send Drake any sort sassy, of congratulations huh? to Kendrick. What about your rap peers? Did they call? I, I know it's kind of competitive, so did they say congratulations? A rap peers, um, bro, holy, is that schoolboy Q in the cut? Holy, he got the bucket. Is that a Kango? Holy, holy, <laughs> bro, and watching, looking how people dress back in the day, it's only been like a decade, but holy, it's so different, bro. It's so nostalgic for me. All you needed back then was a, a a hoodie or like a a pullover or some type of jacket, you know, a clean crisp hat, edge. You always need an edge or a taper or whatever, you know, and you you straight. He cold. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. And I mean, at this point, Drake's at least got to be thinking like this guy's starting to become a problem. He's he's getting a little bit close now. And Kendrick's winning streak was just beginning, as two months later. He cleaned up at the 2013 BET Awards, winning the best male hip hop artist over Drake. I came. You think Drake really cared about Kendrick winning the the best male artist award from BET? Like, is BET like the 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 staple or like the the say the if de facto award show? Like, I don't I don't. If I was Drake, I wouldn't be tripping off of that. I'd be like, yeah, you can have the BET award. You got that, fam. Him up in that same county building, food stamps, welfare, section eight. And this time I did find a tweet from Drake where he congratulates Kendrick on the win. Congrats to Kendrick as well. Nothing was the same. But with all that said, things were about to change. Here we go. August 12th, 2013 was a special moment for hip hop. To this day, it still stands out as one of the most exciting things to happen in the last decade. On Big Sean's control, Kendrick let everyone in hip hop know just how competitive he was when it came to that number one spot. I'm usually homeboys with the same because I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and the should know what time it is. And that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Push a tea, meat meals, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Sorry. Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler McMiller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now, no verb from you niggas. Damn. And we could really, really use a moment like that right now in hip hop. It's rain like it's Mayweather, good music, yay weather, champagne just tastes better. And let's just give it up. Yo, I, I appreciate what's the dirt for playing a little bit of Big Sean's part. Come here. Nobody, nobody remembers what he spat, bro. But I, I rem, I, I think I remember his his verse was solid, but it wasn't what Kendrick Lamar did. Kendrick Lamar created a moment in hip hop that's forever cemented, and Big Sean was just there. You know, it was his track. Big Sean is the the biggest loser whenever uh, Kendrick Lamar drops anything, bro. Like, I feel bad for Big Sean. I, I think he's a dope artist. Up for Big Sean because to me, he had one of his career best verses, but it just got overshadowed because of Thank Kendrick's you. verse. I said, fuck trying and not doing, cause not doing is something a nigga not doing. I grew up the end big and pop bitch and got ruined. So until I got the same crib, big head in that juicy vid, bitch, I can't mother stop, stop moving. moving. But when it came to Ooh. Kendrick's verse, nobody that he mentioned had a problem with it. K-Dot and them niggas, that's fam, yo. 
I think hip hop need this shit, man. You know. You know, I've been. I knew what it was for hip hop culture. I knew how important it was. He said my name. Like he said my name. Said <laughs> Wale just happy to be here, bro. Yo, shout out to Wale, bro. Attention deficit was cool. You know. Damn. A couple people's name and he said he's the best rapper. I say I'm the best rapper every song I'm on. Yeah. The, the only difference between uh, when you say Wale is that people actually believe it when Kendrick say it. Bro, you need you need like eight Lotus flower bombs for people to take you seriously, bro. No, no, I say that with all due respect, but you're a meme. But he wasn't coming at him in a disrespectful way. He's coming at him in a competitive way. So for me, wait, was he was fucking Meek Mill doing a fucking interview like just leaning all the way back like that? Holy! Was he said my name? Like he said my name. He said my a couple people's name, and he said he's the best rapper. I say I'm the best rapper every song I'm on. Oh. Yeah, but he wasn't coming at him in a disrespectful Wait. way. He's coming at him in a. He's in a radio station right now. He's just comfortable. He must be in Philly. Oh, was getting saucy, or maybe he was just you know you know this was like after like, you know. Like post freak off with Diddy and like you know he can't sit up straight you know. Hey yo, what the fuck? Hey, what, 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 what? I don't know. Maybe his back hurt. Hate to see it. My dog Diddy had him slumped, bro. Ain't no way. A competitive way. So for me, it's one of the things where I appreciate. I didn't take it this seriously. Shout out to Big Crit, bro. Well, I wonder what he's up to. This hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. <laughs> I just like I don't know. It, it just wasn't real to me. <laughs> I just like I I don't know, bro. Why is Drake so sassy? <laughs> so sassy, bro. Hold on. A competitive way. So for me, it's one of those things where I appreciate I didn't take it necessarily as a diss. Hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. I just like, I don't know. It, it just mm. wasn't real to me. It's like, I, I saw him after that and it was just like, love so it's like was that real or was that just like for the people you know what no, i mean i like, think it's a sparring kind of sport yeah but you know at the that. same time it's like you know <laughs> then let like, it be yeah, real but, uh, then you know i mean because those were harsh words right so it's like don't just you can't just say that and then see me and be like yeah man what's up pretending like nothing ever happened like, that's not real and this right here is a perfectly good <laughs> boy, example so sassy, of why people boy. call drake soft and emotional right right you can't act this way and then sit back and wonder why people are labeling you as such. Like, this is, this is why. And it's interesting because when Drake came into the game, he seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's, it's a great thing, though, to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean... And look, Drake was not a rapper that you could just push around. He did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people before. Back in the day, a Toronto rapper by the name of Aristo seriously tried to end drake's career embarrassing over you no don't get it twisted though like drake has been battle tested and i didn't even know about this one fear and it didn't end well for this guy and it's the room of resolution i'm finishing it in here if i copy button flow you mimicking his career damn it was good riddance it was lights out it was a body <laughs> and that, that was the first body that drake caught who is who even is this guy bro Imagine you got bodied so hard in like a rap beef, like you're just a footnote in some some person's some YouTuber's documentary. You can't act this way and then sit back and wonder why people Drake are Drake sent that dude to the shadow like, realm. This is, Holy, this is why. And it's interesting because when Drake came into the game, he seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's it's a great thing though to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean. And look, Drake was not a Yo. rapper that you could just push around. Oh, look, it's he Mike. Go Yo, what's to good? With people before. Back in the day, a Thanks Toronto the rapper sub. by the name of Aristo Welcome. seriously tried to end Long Drake's time career. No and it didn't end well for this guy. And it's the room of resolution. I'm finishing it in here. Uh -huh. If I copy button flow, you mimicking his career. Ooh. It was good riddance. It was lights out. It was a body. <laughs> and that's what it was, man. And that's why good riddance. And, it, and what happened? Good riddance, right? Look at young Drake talking his shit. We like that. We like that. Hope you've been well, Mike. Welcome in.
Hi. I remember when this dropped because it was all over the hip hop blogs in Canada. And yeah, we did have hip hop blogs in Canada. In Is that why he knows so much stuff? Because he's Canadian, bro? This seems like a Canadian move to know all this stuff. 2009, they did exist. With all that said, Drake dropped Nothing Was The Same, and we get to hear the first subliminal shot for Kendrick. On the track titled The Language, Drake immediately starts out with a shot. I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. Damn. So when Kendrick's control verse dropped, Drake stated- Wait, that was about Kendrick Lamar? That went over my head, bro. I remember Nothing Was The Same. It was great on multiple occasions that he did not find the verse impressive that he thought it was for shock value and that it would soon be forgotten but it was it was real cool mm. for like you know a couple weeks but like oh this doesn't age too well we're still talking about that verse to this day <laughs> ain't no way boy like if i asked you for example like how does that verse start <laughs> One of Drake's I, I more notable claims was that Kendrick had a great first album, but he questioned whether or not he could do it again. And as far as Kendrick goes, like I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And and consistency is it's been one album. Consistency true. is like you need more than one album, you know. True, so it's true, like, true. It's time to show and prove. And Drake claimed that he was all about putting out memorable bodies of work as opposed to creating moments. When it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. However, Drake continues to send some more shots. Any nigga that's talking that shit just to get a reaction. Again, Drake refers to Kendrick as someone that wrote the control verse to get attention. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. A motor mouth is defined as a person who talks quickly and continuously, often without considering what they're saying. Damn, he just said Kendrick Lamar is just rapping, bro. He'd be like, miracle spiritual, you know? Damn, bro. I didn't even know this was about Kendrick. In this case, someone that raps fast. Nah, but Rick and Mortis is crazy. Listen to the lyrics, actually. It's clearly about Kendrick. Talking that shit with your back to me, just know it always get back to me. So outside of the DMX comment, there were some other interviews where Kendrick had laughed at Drake's expense. I heard about you touring with Drake. Yeah. I was like, that's dope, that's dope. And I was like, well, I hope it doesn't hang with Drake too hard because yeah. Drake isn't exactly doing what we thought he would, what many of nerdy backpackers like myself thought he might be doing a few years ago. Right. And honestly, man, at this point, I would not be one bit surprised if Kendrick said something behind Drake's back and it got back to him. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. At the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards, <laughs> Kendrick Bobby decided Bobby? to throw some gas on the fire. Oh, this is a cypher. He went into the awards with the most nominations at 14, right? and Drake was a very close second with 13. However, Kendrick would be the man to come out on top, winning Lyricist of the Year, MVP of the Year, Album of the Year, and Feature of the Year. Drake also came out with a handful of awards for Best Hip Hop Video, Track of the Year, and People's Champ. However, it would be Kendrick again that stole the show. Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control. They took the sense of the rapper back in his pajamas. Drama clothes. clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you, high five. I'm, I'm bulletproof. His shots are never penetrate. Pin a tail on a donkey, boy, you've been a fake. So, pretty self-explanatory, Kendrick uses Drake's album title Nothing Was The Same to call him out for being sensitive regarding the control verse. And this whole thing got a lot of people excited, and just the very next day, Sway asked Kendrick if the bars were meant for Drake. Was, uh, people want to know, was that directed towards Drake or anybody in particular? Damn, Schoolboy Q is really transformed. I'm trying to be... I'm trying to get, I'm really trying to glow up like Schoolboy Q, bro. He looked like, damn, bro. He really came a long way. Have you guys heard of uh, Blue Lips, uh, Schoolboy Q? I still got to listen to that. Maybe I'll review it for the channel. What's the difference between People's Champ and VIP? Uh, I don't know. BET probably had, uh, like, uh, they needed uh, a limit or, like, uh, what's, the, what's that word? What's that word? They had a quota for... Uh, for awards is like damn we need one more award okay 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 people's champ no we already got that vip boom i think that's how it went particular i'm pretty sure uh, that's how it I'm went uh-huh 
But Drake did not seem to think so, and just a few weeks later, he came with some more subliminal shots on a future track titled Shit. And that's the name of the song, Shit. But, uh, I always like this record. Yo, this shit was fire. And to me, this is one of the best subliminal shots of the whole Mark, saga. Like, on the Drake side, sounds like Jay-Z here. It's a very hove like thing to say where he's just completely sunning kendrick so it's been known that kendrick puts on heavy for the west coast claiming that he's the king but drake refers to him as his son because kendrick went on his first big tour with drake and of course they had some shows in california at the time even kendrick admitted that he was not used to these large crowds the transition of me doing the, the 2000 venues I've been doing back then. Damn. It's a little sketchy for me doing this 10,000. I gotta really work some magic. I even found a Kendrick tweet from 2012 when he was on tour with Drake where he says, Finally home, LA, Club Paradise. Let's see what happens tonight. I see, I see why, uh, like top rappers and like they don't they don't tweet they don't do interviews anymore because you got like hip-hop historians like what's the dirt bro just like putting it all in a documentary it was like remember that one time when kendrick lamar admitted that he was like not good at big venues like i do the internet does it's there forever damn that's a bar so this one clearly a reference to Kendrick's control verse. A lot of MCs responded to Kendrick with a verse of their own. Wait, Joel, Joel, Joel Ortiz, Joey Badass, Meek Mill, B O B O B responded. <laughs> Lupe Fiasco, Joe Button, Joe Button re responded to everything, bro. Joel Ortiz, he didn't even mention you, bro. Shout out to him though. And Drake is basically claiming that, given the fact that he's a bigger artist, if he says Kendrick's name, he's just doing him a favor. And this next one's not even a diss. I just want to show you guys my favorite line from the song. You know. Wait, wait, wait. Did he have a Jordan? Are on his he's ear. basically claiming that given the fact that he's a this next one's not even a diss i just want oh, to show man. you guys my favorite line from the song okay are those sixes i didn't know sixes came in low in that color i don't know man canadians be doing the most bro come on watch the third be better man and Mike will make it. I'm the young rat. You know. Wait, what's, what's the point of... Uh, never mind. Oh, he just signed a deal with Jordan. Mike will make the beat. Oh, that's why he put the... That's still, that's still cringy, man. Shit's fire. Come on. However, just a few days later, an issue of Vibe magazine was released, and Drake oh talks guy. about Kendrick again, stating how he didn't like how the control verse messed with the rollout of his album. Where it became an issue is that I was rolling out an album while that verse was still bubbling. So my album rollout became about this thing. Drake then continues to position himself as someone that is above anything that Kendrick has to say. He's hungry, so he's going to do what he has to do, like the BET cipher, but again, it's not enough for me to go. I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not gonna fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove that he can play ball. No offense. Now at this point, but Jordan has championships, you know. He got that drip though. He got yeah. He put that shit on though. You're the right. Story we're about to witness one of the biggest upsets in Grammy history. At the 56th annual Grammy Awards, oh, no. Kendrick lost the hip hop uh, album of the year to Macklemore and Ryan uh, Lewis. Man. Rightfully so, people were outraged. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. All you got to do is look at Pharrell's face because it says it all. Bruh, this is back, bruh. That's a big ass hat. That brim is too small for that hat, bro. Bro was wearing a track, an Adidas, an Adidas track suit, and that big ass Forrest Gump hat, bro. Not even Forrest Gump. Uh, Smokey the Bear, bro. That's a Smokey. 
Y'all remember Smokey the Bear? Hold on. Y'all don't remember Smokey the Bear, bro. Really. Y'all don't. That is a Smokey the Bear hat. No, 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 man. Come on, man. Look at that. That is crazy. What is... What? what where, is this still 2013? Or when was this? Holy. Wait, why is Mr. T here? What Mr. T and Smokey the Bear have in common? 10 facts? Bro, wait, what is this? I, I, I'll, I'll indulge that in my own time. He's just trying to get off the stage as quickly as possible. Like, why? Why did they get me to do this? And Macklemore, feeling the heat, decided to text Kendrick afterwards and say that he felt he should have won and that he got robbed. He should have kept that. And it would have been a nice gesture if he didn't take a screenshot of the text yeah. and post it on social media yeah. for everyone to see. And True. just a month later, Drake gave his two cents in a Rolling Stone interview. Uh, you won. Why are you posting your text message? Just chill. Take your W. And if you feel like you didn't deserve it, go get better. Make better music. It felt cheap. It didn't feel genuine. Why do that? Why feel guilt? You think those guys would pay homage to you if they won? Damn. Well, no, nah, he felt that because, like, literally, bro, Good Kid, Mad City over it. What, what, his, his album, Macklemore's album, was literally called The Heist, bro. And he he definitely got the take, bro. He definitely stole everything. To name just Kendrick? That shit made me feel funny. No, in that case, you robbed everybody. We all need text messages. That's not a good look from Drake, bro. He's like, why are you only apologizing to Kendrick? Apologize to me. Ah, <laughs> oh, bro. Now you guys tell me, does Drake seem like he's defending Kendrick in this article? Nah. Or does it seem like he's salty because he's not in the mix? At this point, the feud dies down for about eight months, and Drake even had some very kind Carl, words for Kendrick Kruger, what's at good? his old fest when he brought out J. Cole. And why you all got your phones out? I want to show. Damn, bro. Drake Cole. Drake Cole is definitely the middle child, bro. He gets dragged into anything, bro. Like, holy. Even back then, Drake Cole was like just being dragged. <laughs> uh, what is he wearing, bro? I hate Drake Cole. Just kidding. Shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. Kendrick was on my However, it looks like Kendrick did Wait, there's a J. Cole K. Dot beef? I bet it's not 45 minutes. Not get the message as just two months later he responds to Drake's motor mouth line on a J-Rock track titled Pay for It. I tell him all the hell King Kendrick resurrected my vengeance Been okay. that your motor up till I break down the engine hey. Clearly a response to Drake's subliminal on the language Again, Kendrick inserts himself as the king And he doesn't seem to think that Drake can go to distance with him And it will be just two weeks later where Kendrick gets asked about this alleged diss You know, a lot of rumors are with the Drake thing Like, you know, is, yeah. did you really bring the Drake thing back with the, with the J-Rock uh, single or? What's what, that about? What, what, what? what I hear about the, the Drake feud. Or... See, no, look at, no, look at him Drake. going. Look yeah. at the, damn, man. No. You're disgusting. I think no, 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 Kendrick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We know what you were doing. Come on, Kendrick. Don't, 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 don't do, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's... he's trying to play sly, bro. Every... Come on, man. But I, I guess this is the smol the slow smoldering build up to like what we're, where we're at now because like, People were pussyfooting about like Kendrick right here, bro. You should have said it with your chest. Yes, it was about Drake. I meant it. I say it again. That's, I think, <laughs> that's people it's digging in. That's people digging in way too far. Once again, we're all reaching, and it's it's not about Drake. And just a few days later, Kendrick would get asked about his now year-old control verse, and this time he said that all the people that mattered understood it, and for the people who didn't, they don't matter. The people that respected, you know, was, was, you know, people that knew the deal. Yeah. What's the important people? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and knew what it was. And Damn. People, you know, people that don't respect it. I mean, okay. People that don't get it. And, Kendrick a little sassy too with it. Okay. Okay. You know, really didn't matter. And again, Kendrick claims that the chances of seeing him and Drake go head to head is slim to none because they're two different artists. 
it's just a whole nother dynamic. I can't see myself uh, going bar for bar with Drake. You know, we we two different type of artists. You did. You eat Drake. Hey, yo. And I honestly feel like this is just Kendrick downplaying Drake as not being on his level. I don't think he respects Drake. I don't think he really ever respected Drake. And there's some underlying meaning behind this when he keeps saying it. Would Drake be somebody you would like to have some fun with? Nah, I, I couldn't. We come from two different worlds. Also, bro, DJ Who Kid has been, I, it seems like he's been like in this beef for the longest time. And it's funny how like the AI leak of Drake uh, dropping Gimme 50 is a DJ Who Kid uh, affiliated beat, or it has his tag on it. By the way, uh, around nine, um, we're going to go on June Jizzle's podcast and we're going to uh, talk about this whole beef and the the, in the the tracks that have been dropped, AI or not. So stick around for that. Worlds, mm. two different I just see, I, I just saw what that. time it was. We've been Playing shooting for an hour it's already. Entertaining, maybe to you know, the people listening, you know, but not for myself. Keep in mind, Kendrick was classified as the savior of hip hop. He was embraced by everyone just for the art, whereas someone like Drake really had to go to distance to prove himself, and even then, he could never win over the fans that admired a certain level of lyricism. Many consider Drake to be a pop star, and I feel like Kendrick is saying this without really saying it. Just hold on. However, next Drake drops his surprise mix. All right, listen, listen. Just hold on as we're going home. That's how I start. Uh, whenever I'm doing karaoke, that's the song that I start off with. Then I get into a little bit of Usher, Usher Baby. Then I get into a little bit of 808s and Heartbreak. And, you know, uh, so a sprinkle of Kid Cudi here and there. But, like, is that a pop song? Just hold on, we're going home? Yes. Is it fun to sing along to? Yes. Do I do I dock Drake some points for making that? No. <laughs> it's just a good it's just a good time. It's just a good time, man. Mixtape, if you're reading this is too late. And on that project, he had some more shots for Kendrick. They gon' say your name on them airwaves. They gon' hit you up right after like it's only rap. So Drake had claimed previously that he saw Kendrick just five days after the control verse. And it was all love. I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. And at this time, Drake was the talk of the town because this surprise project made a big splash. So just a few weeks later, Kendrick decided to shake things up and finally dropped his long awaited album by surprise as well. Uh, and when I wake up, I recognize you looking at me for the pay cut. Bahamas, be Naturally, fans and the media pitted the two albums against each other. Hendrick, bruh, how do you let Drake drop a mixtape that goes harder than your album? I, you can't compare those two, bro. Also, like, I feel like a lot of people just don't understand to pip them butterfly. It's just not, it's just not like commercially received well but like come on as a masterpiece a freaking mixtape not gonna compare drake and kendrick anymore because they're not even playing the same sport right now kendrick is in his own league he is. and comparing these projects makes zero sense it's apples to oranges drake's mm -hmm, project mm -hmm, was great mm -hmm, for club mm -hmm. djs gym playlist cruising in the car whereas kendrick's album touched on real world issues was chanted during pro right it was that we gonna be all right was like during the pandemic the bml bl m what did, what is bml bro am i dyslexic holy um <laughs> the blm movement it was like a whole we gonna be all right y'all remember that Critically acclaimed, it won a Pulitzer Prize. Look at me. You cannot compare that if to if you're reading it, it's too late, bro. What? <laughs> Y'all are tripping. Y'all wild for that. Test. And is looked at today as one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. All time. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. However, Drake wasn't done as he let another one go on the game's track 100. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. Again. Wait, was was Drake ever conscious? What's what's the the 
the top Drake conscious rap song. Please let me know. What? When Kendrick had just released to Pimp a Butterfly, his most conscious album to date, and Drake is basically saying that he could do that style if he wanted, but he's on a different mission with his music. Also important to note, the video for this track was filmed in Compton. So Drake is saying all this while in Kendrick City. I'm in the club every time that they play the competition. If they even play the competition, then I seen a response again. Now, the game was asked about this, and he didn't seem to think it was a shot at Kendrick, but he also didn't count it out. Drake was taking subliminals at Kendrick on that song, and Kendrick caught it and wanted to return something. I think that would be great for hip hop. However, one of the worst things to be exposed for mm. as a rapper Ten bands, was about 50 to bands, happen to 100 Drake. bands. Oh, Quinn Miller. That's why I was like, damn, I remember this track. Yeah, Quinn Miller. That's I feel so bad for or sad for Quinn Miller. He lost a leg. I know it was like a coincident or like they have no correlation between the two, but I feel like if Quinn Miller wasn't exposed for being Drake's ghostwriter, he would still have both his legs right now. Just saying. On July 22nd, 2015, Meek Mill took to Twitter to expose Drake for having ghostwriters. 10 bands, 50, 50 bands, 100 bands, bands, man. I can remember having a conversation with my little brother uh, on the phone, and we were both saying, like, there's no way. There's no way that Drake has ghostwriters because he's too good of a writer himself. It just doesn't make sense. The reference track. Oh, oh man. Were we wrong? Okay, 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands. Man. Did you hear the Drake and Compton with the game is a chess move for sure. I think they're all playing chess, right? But like, um, one thing about reference tracks, I think, yeah, it is kind of cheating. Like if you're a rapper and you get a reference tracks of someone handing you a whole song, but it, it just, there's a difference and there's a testament to how, uh, the artist that the track is for transforms it with their own inflections of their voice and their own type of cadence and style within the guidelines of the reference track, of course. Because, like, oh, like you heard what Quinn, like, it don't have the same energy. Like, Drake brought it on, like, 10 Conversation bands. Conversation with my little brother uh, on the phone, and we were both saying, like, there's no way. There's no way that Drake has ghostwriters because he's too good of a writer himself. It just doesn't make sense. It makes sense. Like, li 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 listen to it. Oh, boy, were we wrong. Okay, 10 bands, 50 bands. Hey, don't even... Bands, man. Did you hear the... Did you hear the... It sounded like he was reading it off or something, too. Drake has ghostwriters, yes. He does. Reference tracks? Line for line. Word for word. This is bad. No, it's a, it's a terrible time to be a Drake fan. Shortly after Meek's tweets, the reference tracks would leak to support the ghostwriter allegations. And now we get back to Kendrick, who just a few months uh -oh. earlier made reference to rappers with ghostwriters on his single King Oh, Punta. yeah. But a rapper with a ghostwriter. What did that happen? Where you and I want So basically, Kendrick found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did. Damn. And months before it even got exposed. And Kendrick is basically saying, like, I know what you've been up to, buddy. I'm not going to say. Wait, King Kuta came out before the Drake and uh, Mink Mill beef? Really? I remember when people used to go stride the whip. They they went stupid. They went dumb. Oh, no. I swore I went down. So basically, Kendrick wow. found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did, and months before it even got exposed. Wow. Bro, we're still in 2015. And Kendrick is basically saying, like, I know what you've been up to, buddy. I'm not going to say anything, but I know. For some all reason, that I said, I've, as everyone mm. knows, Drake responded to Meek Mill with a now legendary diss record back to back. Back to back like I'm Jordan, 96, 97, whoa. Bro, I, say what you want about Drake, but he is definitely battle tested. He put out charge up was like, uh, whatever. But then back to back came out, bro. I waited four days. Where y'all at? Come on. Even the cover art, bro, is I think that's when, uh, the Toronto, Toronto Blue Jays beat 
Philly. Like, it was just perfect. It was perfect. The execute, Drake, say whatever you want about Drake being corny and cheesy, blah, blah, blah. But his ex execution is top notch. Like, you can't take that away from him. You better at fighting when you fighting when you beat up when you get beat up so much. I guess. And being a day one Drake fan for me personally, I was never. Wait, wait, he's battle tested because everyone beat him up. <laughs> you get better at fighting. <laughs> yeah, beat up so much. So you're saying what you're saying, Cyber, is that what you're saying, Cyber, is that like Drake is Goku, because Goku got his ass whooped plenty of times. What would if Drake is Goku? Does that mean Kendrick Lamar is Piccolo? Or is he Vegeta? He's Vegeta. He's shorter. Got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. If if Drake is Goku, then Kendrick Lamar is Vegeta. That makes perfect sense. Ever more proud of Drake in his whole entire career perfect sense. than when he dropped back to back. The new record, uh, back to back. Hmm? Tough tune. <laughs> tough, tough tune. But once again, Kendrick responds to Drake just one month later on Dr. He's Dre's got Compton album. Attitude. But still I got enemies giving me energy, I wanna fight now. Subliminal sending me all of this hate, I thought I was holding the mic down. In this one, Kendrick Boy, references Drake's recent track, Enemies. Got enemies, got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is once again talking about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different from what he's- Even their hairstyles are different, bro. Like Drake had the clean cut Caesar, and like, look at, look at Kendrick Lamar, bro, with the free form dreads, bro. And the nappy beard that don't even connect, bro. Come on, watch out. Enemies giving me energy, I don't wanna fight now. Subliminal sending me all of this hate. I thought I was holding the mic down. In this one, Kendrick references Drake's recent track, Enemies. Wait, what team am I on? I'm on team hip hop, okay? I'm here for the entertainment. I will I'm trying to be uh Switzerland, but decide a clear winner right now because uh Kendrick has yet to respond, even though wait actually at nine o'clock I'll be talking about my thoughts about this whole hip hop civil war on June Jizzle stream. So I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Team Tomodachi, exactly. <laughs> I'll let you guys know then though. Got enemies, got a lot of enemies. Kendrick like is tea. once again talking about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different from what he's doing, but he didn't stop there as he did it again on another song from the same album. They lie to bury him, they nominated six to carry him. The beef is on his breath inherit in the drama better than the great white. This is life in my aquarium. Mm. The words they BRB, nominated cool, cool. six to carry him could potentially be a Drake reference, given the fact that Toronto is referred to as the six. And if this is the case, Kendrick is basically saying that everyone seems to think that Drake is his greatest opponent, but that he's a great white and that this is his aquarium, aka he's the king of hip hop. And you ever look back on any and feel like you'd like to change any of the any of the things that you've written or uh it'll be me saying i want to go deeper i should have went deeper I see. <laughs> you know um yeah I instead of saying back. I should have held back. Uh -oh. and at this point kendrick finally gets his well-deserved moment at the grammys winning five awards but more importantly he finally clinched the best rap album category <laughs> with to pimp a butterfly oh glory to god that's for sure Drake also racked up a bunch of accolades in 2015. If you're reading this, it's too late. Broke Spotify's record for 17.3 million streams in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts. And his collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. And I mean... As I ever said, Kendrick is Jiren. The ball alien dude from Super? This guy? I, I I haven't watched Dragon Ball uh, Super, so I I like I know who he is. I know he's OP, but like I yeah I, I have to watch that later. I mean, even at this point, anything Drake touches is gonna do numbers. Next, we get some inside information <laughs> Lux, that this situation that. between Drake and Kendrick could have got really ugly. Former NFL player <laughs> turned commentator Marcellus uh -huh. Wiley uh -huh. wouldn't say any names but said that years earlier, he interviewed one of the two rappers 
and it completely went off on the other. Uh, uh -huh. The Drake Kendrick <laughs> beef, uh, when it was really wow. starting to brew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on uh, Sports Nation at the time, and we taped an interview with one of the people, and that one person went in on the other person. Oh. And we were ready to let this go, uh, but then that one person's team made sure that didn't get out. Yeah, so. Mercy. I feel like that, uh, who do you guys think that was between Kendrick and Drake? I feel like, I don't know if Kendrick at that time had enough pull to to get that, like, not released, right? I feel like that's a more Drake thing. But Kendrick just said when he was in the interview with Rick Rubin that, like, uh, like he should have went deeper. So maybe, maybe that was one of his regrets. He's like, damn, I should have let that interview fly. Definitely Drake. I'm leaning more so, so on Drake as well. Marcellus was quoted in a DJ Vlad interview as saying that the person went so hard in this interview that it could have brought the beef to the heights of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. And you gotta keep in mind, Marcellus is trying to sell a book and he claimed that in this book he would expose everything that was said and who said it. Did he? And I bought the book. I spent the $13.99. Oh, he got you, bro. He got you with that. Never shut up. <laughs> he got you, bro. Hey, you I know didn't what? read it. I searched uh, it. And here's what he had to say. We even got Drake on tape talking major shit about Kendrick during an interview. Oh, it was Drake. Oh, he did drop the T. Okay, okay. My bad, Marcellus. My bad. You got it, Marcellus. Interview. Of course, yes, after I watching the interview, Drake's publicist wouldn't let us air that tape, but we still got it. Take my word for it. So that's it. That is the big expose. Like I too was cheated, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray by Marcellus Wiley. Now we need to take any self-promotion tactics with a grain of salt, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Hendrick drops the control verse on August 12th, 2013. Okay, okay. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter. And the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. And you guys could tell me what you think, but to me, I believe that- I mean, the timeline adds up, bro. And how did he do all this, bro? I want to be like this person when I wait. Not like, not like white and or Canadian. Um, just like the, the amount of detail put in a video, like there's no, there's no like, there's no like soft beats here, bro. No Diddy. No Diddy? Pause? I don't know. Like, this is all just like nost either nostalgic information or just information I didn't know, period. Like, this is a very good video. This story, I believe that Drake did this 100%. I personally enjoy making like great music and bodies of work over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. However, in 2016, well. <laughs> one man dominated the charts and that was Drake smashing record after record, pumping out hit after hit. Views sold 1 million in its first week and nice. went on to become quadruple platinum that Ooh. year. He had several number one records such as Work with Rihanna, For Free with DJ Khaled, and One Dance with Wizkid. One Dance actually became Spotify's most streamed song ever, and Spotify also announced that Drake was the most streamed artist of 2016. Basically Damn. in 2016, Drake just dominated. And speaking of For Free by DJ Khaled, Drake actually mentioned Kendrick on that song. No way. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Again, this appears to be more of a friendly nod to Kendrick. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's a jab. That's just like a reference. That is a clever bar. Where Drake is referencing his song, which this is... Dick ain't free. <laughs> Yo, that was a funny as a uh, jazzy uh, track from Kendrick Lamar on To Pimp a Butterfly. Do people say T? Uh... Wow. Also called for free. This dick ain't free. <laughs> However, 2017 was about to start, and Kendrick was about to take some of the most direct shots at Drake to date. Tiptoeing around my name, nigga, you lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you were just playing. Oh, no, I'm just playing K Dot. What's most interesting about this? But, like, I don't know if he's going to mention it here, but, like, this, uh, that's the hard part for it. It's perfect. Um,. It's perfect. Even at the last, at the last bar, he said you got it till April seventh to get y'all like act together. 
this is a perfect response to uh, that that Drake a uh, Drake that J Cole uh, diss towards Kendrick. Like it, it's crazy. Like it is crazy how eerie it is. This track in particular is the timing of when Kendrick put it out. Drake had just dropped his project More Life, which was mostly a happy-go-lucky summer vibe that contained no shots at Kendrick whatsoever. And just a few days later, Kendrick drops this surprise, aggressive 116-bar track that is full of shots at Drake. Yelling one, two, three, four, five. I, I am the greatest rapper alive. So damn great, mother. It's no secret that Drake has claimed to be somewhere on this top five list, but more recently on More Life, he claimed that he was number one on that list. Oh no. I know I said top five, but I'm top two, and I'm not, not two, two, and I got bitch. one. Don't you have one, but it's not one, nigga, no. Nah. So let me get this straight. Kendrick hears this track, gets the pen out, jumps in the booth, and sends a clear message just a few days after Drake drops, that he's the best rapper alive. Ho oh, Jay Z Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. Drake's been known to draw comparisons between himself and Hove, so it only makes sense that this shot was directed at Drake. I used to want to be on Rockefeller, then I turned into Jay. Lastly, Kendrick ends off the track to surprise fans and warn Drake that he's got a new album coming in a few weeks. You know what time it is, Annie up, this is him forever. Y'all got to late with the seven to get your shit together. Ooh. Kendrick was really strategic in releasing this track as it took most of the attention off Drake's project. And to add insult to injury, his fans flocked to Drake's Instagram account and spammed the number four in Roman numerals. <laughs> and Kendrick, true to his word, he drops the album. And he has some more shots for Drake. Niggas wanna flex on me and be in LA for free, huh? Next time they hit the TM freeway, we need receipt, huh? Kendrick references Drake's track for free, and although Drake is from Toronto, he's lived in Calabasas since 2012. With that said, Kendrick is more than likely talking about how Drake was in Compton while shooting the video for 100. Kendrick is from Compton, probably didn't like it. Most of y'all throw rocks and try to hide your hand. Just say his name and I promise that you'll see Candyman. At this point, Kendrick is begging Drake to just call him out. He makes a reference to a popular 90s movie, Candyman, where the premise of that movie is if you say Candyman's name five times, he'll come kill you. Kendrick is basically saying, if you say my name, your career is dead. Oh no. And I think Kendrick has something on Drake. Something scathing, something that... Drake doesn't want to see exposed. We Candyman is oh they did a re they did a remake of it. Should should we say Candyman? Should I look in the camera and say Candyman five times? I already said it twice. Candyman, 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 Candyman. Do I want to die over a meme on YouTube? No. No, I don't. We've already seen Drake a couple times now Dude with try to head. dead this thing. There's more coming, but yeah, Kendrick keeps going. And Kendrick seemingly mocks Drake's style of music on his song, God. You feel some type of way, then, uh, uh. There's nobody gonna tell me that he's not mocking Drake here because Kendrick doesn't usually sound like this. This is Drake. I'm about to glow. Next, we hear Kendrick on future smash hit Mask Off, and this one is a very direct response to one of Drake's shots. Plan em, plan em, plan em. Gotta look yourself and ask what happened. How y'all let a conscious nigga go commercial while only making conscious albums? Very Damn. Wait, I just rem I just realized Future and Kendrick Lamar have been on a track before um before um what's it called? Like that. It was um it was on the, the Black Panther soundtrack. Uh what was it called? What was it called? King's Disease? Miss me with that bullshit. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You remember that? King is dead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can't imagine the op shooting a music video in your city. I can. It happens sometimes, man. Those darn ops. By the way, if you if you guys are on the YouTube side, welcome in. It's your local friendly neighborhood fanboy. Don't forget to like that video. You know, say hello in the chat, comment, you know? I see you guys. I'm here for you. Push and pee. Push and pee. In a place to be. 
Anyway. Very clearly a response to Drake's claims on 100 when he claimed that he could take all of Kendrick's fans if he were to oh, pursue yeah, I'm in New York. the conscious hip-hop lean. I mean, uh, in, I'm in New York and we Millie Rock. Sometimes we hide it in our sock. Stayed on some conscious shit. But Kendrick had proven time and time again that he could have commercial success and be conscious at the same time. At this point, yeah, he had was three amazing. cohesive projects under his belt, all of which were extremely successful. I'm African American. I'm African. I'm black as the moon. Heritage of a small village. Part of my residence. Kendrick had also proved that he could easily navigate the pop music lane having massively successful features with artists like Taylor Swift. We was OG like DLC, remember that? Damn. And again, when you listen to that track, he's not compromising his sound. Like, it is, he's still rapping. It, it's all bars. Now, I'm sure no- But, like, Drake used that to his advantage on the dropping in me 50 AI diss, right? He's like, hey, uh, <laughs> go, go make another song for the Swifties. <laughs> Oh man, I think I think Drake is very strategic with his bars, and I, and I appreciate that. I didn't think it would be this good of a a battle because I didn't think Drake had that dog in him, and I apologize because he definitely does. None of you forgot. The Although he didn't have too much more, uh, the whole short thing. Like, how old are we, bro? Like, yes, he's short. Okay. Whoa! Wow! 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 Holy. Little Wayne is short, you know? I'm not short, by the way. I have no dog in this fight. About Drake's ghostwriter claims, and Kendrick didn't forget either. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Kendrick gave his two cents on the situation. It depends what arena you're putting yourself in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call myself the best rapper if I have a ghostwriter. If you're this saying you're a different type of artist and you don't really care about the art form of being the best rapper, that's true, Lux. Then so be it. Make that's great true. music, but the title, it won't be there. And no matter how you slice it, the dude is not wrong. To there, be that the is best true. rapper, you, gotta you write need your... to write your bars. This is I would true. be lying if I said that when I found out that Drake had ghostwriters that I didn't look at his music differently. I still listen to his music, but even now... When he says something dope, I got this this little voice in the back of my head. He that didn't says, write it. <laughs> yeah, it's dope, but did he write it? However, Drake attempts to keep it friendly again by tipping his hat to Kendrick when Damn outsold More Life by over 100,000 copies. Amazing to see our music moving. A fan had also commented, get Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole on the same record, and Drake liked the comment. Now, I hope at this point you guys can see the theme of Drake trying to squash it. And Kendrick seemingly responds to Drake's praise on his track All the Stars with SZA. Fuck you and all your expectations. Damn. I don't even want your congratulations. Damn. Kendrick is not trying to hear it. Just save the bullshit. Oh, you are born. You the moral to the story. You endorsing mother I don't even like you. I don't even like you, bro. Like, which is true. However, on the exact same day, Drake drops a track with some of his most obvious shots to date, Diplomatic Immunity. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. I taught you everything you know, now you got student pride. Damn. Drake does not like the Kendrick comparisons, and he brings it back to when he helped Kendrick with his career early on. What makes this clearly about Kendrick is the no you and I line, which were both tracks from- Oh, no, 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 that, that's it. Yeah, exactly, Zyber, that's to avoid the copyright. Cause uh, I looked at the video details, there's no copyright on this video. That's why we're watching it, baby. <laughs> that's why we're watching it, baby. From Kendrick's to Pimp a Butterfly. And I love myself. The, world is again, be the two would then go head to head at the 2018 Billboard Awards. Many question who would be crowned as Rapper of the Year, and once again, Kendrick came out drastically ahead. Oh yeah, this is this And yet again, Drake attempts to be friendly by sharing some old Twitter DMs between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Finishing my project, Section 80. When you back in Cali? I know that shit will be incredible. We got to do something for real. I'll be back for BET. Damn, Drake was trying to wave the white flag after damn. After damn, he's like, okay, Kendrick can do exactly what I can do. Damn, I should. 
Damn was a masterpiece though. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Imagine, imagine a universe where they, uh, Drake is done. Uh, imagine a, <laughs> imagine a universe where they actually, you know, linked up, you know? Imagine the music we could have got. Towards this month. And this could be. Would you guys trade the potential music we would have got if Drake and Kendrick Lamar like mended things, or would you rather this universe where they're beefing and it's all entertaining? Let me know. One of two things, really. Like Drake could be saying, "Look, man, we." I, I choose violence. I choose this universe. Hell yeah. It used to be cool. Like, remember? Can we get back to that? Or he could be just throwing this back in Kendrick's face again that he's the one that gave him a start and like. I put you on, remember? Regardless of the reasoning, Drake still had another subliminal for Kendrick on Sandra's Rose. Bury me and I'll be born again. I walk in godly form amongst the mortal men. Mm. Again, Drake makes reference to another track mm. from To Pimp a Butterfly with the words mortal men. In this one, Drake continues to insert himself as being a caliber above Kendrick. But I don't know. I'm no mortal man. And Drake ends off the year with even more compliments for Kendrick in a Rap Radar interview. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. See, I was watching something about, uh, I was watching DJ Academics. Shout out to Academics, not for the man that he is, because I think he's a man child and, you know, he has a lot of issues that he needs to, probably therapy. But like, as far as his coverage on this happenings and the whole P. Diddy fiasco, Tom Notch, like chef's kiss, right? I say that, but like this man is a d rider bro he is slobbing on drake's knob bro and like he said he said drake has never mentioned the big three clearly drake just did hello the other two guys that i'm constantly you know i'm no mortal man and Drake ends off the year with even more compliments for Kendrick we were, in a rap radar We were talking radar about interview. a little bit of that. That was at Coachella. You know, the other two guys that I'm See, he clearly mentions you know, the big three. Against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm, Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they... See, the way that GJ academics, and I think he's good at this because he, he wants Drake to win, right? And so he's using his platform as propaganda, right? He said... Because I was listening to this this morning, Academic said it was um, that guy. What's his name? I forget his name, but, you know, he's part of Rap Radar. I forget his name. He's very popular. I'm sorry. But um, he said that he brought up the big three where clearly Drake, Drake is the one that said it. The other two Kendrick guys. In a Rap Radar interview. I have a lot of respect for him. Elliot Wilson. You know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. Three headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. I always think about the Drake tirade he did and then he edited him sleeping next to his second. Really? Wait, can you link me that video? I want to see that. Yeah, so I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to, you know, stay true to what we started, started with um, and finding new ways to do it. However, things go quiet in 2020. Keep in mind, Kendrick wasn't releasing any music and fans started to question if the feud was over. I don't think that the Drake Kendrick tension is dead. No, I think that dead. last decade they fought as long as they could fought and the mm -hmm, decade mm -hmm, ended mm -hmm, without mm -hmm. us having a decisive winner. And I don't think Bomber. either of them have, have gotten off of that. And people call Joe crazy all the time, but Joe Budden is right about a lot of shit. He is. And while Kendrick is gone ghost, nowhere to be found. Wait, speaking of, uh, bro. <laughs> oh, link it in the Discord. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how to permit people to post links. Uh, can do I click on your name in OBS? Can I do it in OBS? Or do I have to go to? Yeah, I don't know how to do it in OBS. I'm sorry. Link it in Discord for favor. Oh wait, wait. You're, you're literally telling me how to do it. I'm sorry, bro. I'm a, I'm a fool. You're literally, you're literally telling me how to do it. Okay. Cool. Do it again. 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 No, 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 
All right, what is this a link to? Hold on. Oh, Lee. Oh, you're talking about academics. That's hilarious. We'll watch that after this. Hold on. Down, Drake completely dominated the music business. I'm talking about Oprah's bank account, Tussy Slide, Nonstop, In My Feelings, God's Plan, Nice For What, Pop Star, yeah, Drake Life went Is on Good, a, a Chicago tier. Freestyle, Laugh Now, Cry Later. This is just undeniable. Like, there's there's no other artist on earth who is doing- Kwame, I'm being good. Next month, this time, I'll be in Japan again, because that's what we do, baby. Hope you've been well. Doing this, except for Drake. However, in 2021, the boogeyman himself, Kendrick oh. Lamar, rises from the dead and has some shots for Drake on Family Ties with Baby Keen. Smoking on your top five. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. Nine. Again, he's firing back at Drake's now overstated top five claims. Top five, no debating. Top five, top five, top, top five. five. And Kendrick would continue on to address Drake's claims about being the GOAT. I am the Omega, PG Lane, Rolly Gang, SIE, don't you address me unless it's with four letters. At the end of the track, four letters, King GOAT. seemingly reveals that Drake has been DMing his girl. Number two DMing my bitch. that's cool, I don't, that's why. However, just a <laughs> month later, Drake would reply to Kendrick again on his song, No Friends in the Industry. For the baby, who the GOAT? And I make the shit about the numbers, all I know. Drake knows at this point when it comes to selling records, when it comes to breaking records, nobody is standing next to him in hip hop. Yeah, that is true. And I don't think anybody can argue about that. But like when it comes to discography and just like the number of classic records, right? Even though he has them in the streaming numbers, I don't think he has them in that criteria, right? And that criteria is subjective. So it depends on who you're asking. But I mean, one of the rappers won a Pulitzer Prize. When has an, an, a rapper ever done that? Also, people, I don't know, I'm old, right? But people forget MC Hammer was very lit. MC Hammer was very lit until he wasn't. <laughs> and now nobody, like, he's a, he's a joke. He's a meme. Just remember that. I don't think that Drake's gonna, I don't think the Drake is ever gonna decline to that. But I'm just saying, Hammer don't hurt him. <laughs> That's because Drake's make songs for the hugs. For the hugs? Very on. He makes songs for the hugs? Up, he simply dominates on a commercial scale. With all that said, Drake was now celebrating 10 years of Take Care, and he decided to share an old photo of him and Kendrick. And I get it. Like, you know, he helped with the... I just noticed the graphic for Drake tries to squash it. Bro, like, he is biased. Like... I might be slightly biased too, but like, holy. And he decided to share an old photo. Look, 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 Drake tries to squash it number six with the crying emoji. Like, holy. It's funny, but like, you know, you know, report evenly. I, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I enjoy pettiness. It's like a dessert. It's like, it's like tasty, right? But like, I don't know, man. Photo of him and Kendrick. And I get it. Like, you know, he helped with the project. Nice gesture. But why keep doing this? Why keep being friendly to someone who doesn't respect you? True. However, at this point, four years have passed since Kendrick had dropped an album. And while he was on a milk box missing, Drake was still very much active, releasing Certified Lover Boy. That album went on to break Spotify's record for the most streams in a single day. And in that same year, he also had some notable bangers like Wants and Needs with Little Baby. I don't like uh, Little Baby. Little Baby. I always get Little Baby and the Baby. Uh, but um, yeah, Little Baby washed him in that in that in that track. Am I the only one that thinks that? Like I don't even listen to Little Baby like that. But like I'm pretty sure he washed him. The white fat Albert, what's good, Matthew? Just out, just dropping by to say hi. They say hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Thank you, man. Finally, oh, after five fucking years, we get the Kendrick album. Rain on me, put the blame on me. Got guilt, got hurt, got shame on me. And sadly, uh, a lot of people did not like album. this album. 
I'm not one of them. I, I actually love when you count me out. Fuck I'm it up, also fuck a big fuck therapy fuck guy because I'm, I'm oh. bipolar. I don't really have any choice. I thought he was going to say I'm also a big therapy guy because I'm Canadian. Don't you know? I have no regrets. I have no regrets. But not be a therapy guy, but this project Canceled. definitely connected with me, <laughs> at least. And it was on this album where Kendrick admitted on a song that he didn't understand why Drake and Kanye squashed their beef. When Kanye got back with Drake, I was slightly confused. Mm. Guess I'm not what you I think. Got some healing to do. Mm. And in my opinion, this is just Kendrick's way of telling Drake that he has zero intentions of ever patching things up with him. And there's people that we meet all the time that we just don't like. Like sometimes it's for no reason at all. True. And Kendrick's got a reason. Next, Drake gets extra petty by releasing a dance album, Honestly Never Mind, on Kendrick's birthday. If I come around you, can I be myself? Drake knows Alexa, when's Kendrick Lamar's birthday? Kendrick Lamar's birthday is on June 17th. June 17th? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, well, fuck me then. Huh? That's cool. All right, moving on. Damn well that Kendrick is the last person that would ever release a project like this one. And what better way of saying, look at how versatile I am, than by dropping a project like this on his birthday. Now, I don't think this little stunt bothered Kendrick at all, but it was still pretty strategic from Drake. But Drake was not done yet. On a track <laughs> with Lil Uzi, he took some really obvious shots at Kendrick. Fake woke niggas, fake deep. There ain't no fame for me. Yeah, yo ass a little sneak peek, yeah. Now you gotta take a back seat. So, just a few months earlier, Kendrick had very similar wording on his N95 track. Drake is insinuating that Kendrick is more or less running a grift when it comes to what he's saying in his music. He's basically claiming that Kendrick doesn't really stand by or believe what he's preaching, mm. and he also reminds Kendrick that he's the one who put him on. What made this reference even more obvious is the line, now you gotta take a back seat, which is clearly a reference to Kendrick's backseat back freestyle. freestyle. And just like me, it looks like Drake really enjoyed Kendrick's new project as he showed up in the audience at Kendrick's at show in Toronto. Yo, crazy, man. Again, Drake knows what he's doing. He knows the blogs are gonna pick this up. The question is, was he there to show love or was he there to play chess? I mean, at this point, based on the history of Drake's friendliness, I'm just gonna chalk it up to him just trying to be cool with him again. And for Kendrick, what better way of taking five years away than by dropping an album and cleaning house again at the BET Awards? Going into the awards, Drake was way ahead of everybody with 14 nominations, but it didn't matter because Kendrick mopped the floor with them Winning Best Hip Hop Video, Damn. Best Live Performer, Damn. Lyricist of the Year, Damn. Video Director of the Year, Damn. Album of the Year, Damn. and Artist of the Year. Damn. However, Drake wasn't very impressed with Kendrick's five-year delay, and he let everyone know about it while on tour. I don't know about these guys that go away three, four, five years and want to chill out and all that shit. That's not me. I want to ask you guys this. How many times has Kendrick said something nice about Drake in the last decade? Zero. Zero. Goose egg. Fucking zero. It's all been Drake. We've got seven or eight examples here in this video of Drake complimenting Kendrick, saying that he wants to do music with him. Damn, are Canadians just nice? I just realized Drake is Canadian, right? So maybe that's the Canadian in him, don't you know? That just wants to be nice, you know? Do a team for the city fam, you know? Drake has this accent. It's like this fake Patois accent. And I, I, I think a lot of people from Scarborough, if I'm not mistaken, have that accent. So, like, where is he from? Is Scarborough in Toronto? I don't know, man. Anyway. I don't know if they're actually nice. Yeah, that is true, Lux. They do play hockey. Hockey is not a nice sport. I'm reminiscing on old times, just being friendly with them. And Kendrick Speaking of hockey, do you think dentists in uh, like in hockey uh, areas like uh, you think like whenever there's a championship that's like their Super Bowl or what? Like let me know. 
has said fucking nothing. That got to tell you something. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. It came across my feet. Edit. Good to see it edited correctly. Here, yeah, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Uh-huh. Say what? Bitch, I'm about to blow up. What a dope video. Holy, bro. I like I liked and subscribed. Go check out the original video. It's from What's the, the Dirt. It came out in November, but like this let's set the stage. I think everybody should do their research. Uh because I'm I'm pretty sure this is like the last greatest hip hop battle cuz it seems like this generation. I don't know if I'm, I'm I'm about to go into my old man on a soapbox ramp about hip hop. Uh, this generation, the new generation, and the upcoming generation, I don't think they care about bars like that. So I think this is the last opportunity for fans of hip-hop that grew up with hip-hop that are a little bit older to see, like, icons, titans of this hip-hop thing clash and go together. That's why I like this hip-hop civil war, because, like, there's no real, like, beef yet. Right, so I don't think it's gonna come to fisticuffs. So it's just straight up bar. Shout out to Rick Ross for replying. Nobody needed that out of you, but we like that. Shout out to Drake for replying. Shout out for not shout out to J Cole. J Cole, you you did good by replying, but when you recant your statement, you gotta know you let Nas down. You let. Mark from RDC down, you let all your fans down, you let the all the people that use natural deodorant down, bro. Come you do do better, J. Cole. Do do better. Kendrick Lamar for kicking it off with Metro Boomin and Future. Thank you guys all. It's been your local friend. We friend it's been your local friendly neighborhood fan boy. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye! I'm not ending stream, I'm just, uh, that was a recording for a video. What do you guys think about that? Okay, who do you guys have in the, in this beef? <laughs> okay. What do you guys think about that? Let's watch this. Zyber sent this. Oh, my play button doesn't work on my... What top five you smoking on, Kendrick? Because my top five is Drake, 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 Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Holy shit. My top five you smoking on Kendrick? Because my top five is Drake, 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 Drake. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so good. It's so good. Holy. Okay. Yo, Oblivion, what's good? What's good, bro? That's hilarious. Uh, okay, every disc explained from Drake's for all the dogs album, or every disc explained from Scary Hour. Wait, is this just all him? Kendrick. Oh, this one's 30 minutes. Drake was scared. Drake's first L in hip hop. Every diss. Oh, so he's been doing this. Okay. I'm glad that he's uh, getting the recognition. It's hard for Canadians out there to get a recognition in hip hop. See, Drake. Uh, but yeah. Another time. I So I, I need to get back into the swing of things. And while um, I think this is a perfect time to get back while hip hop is exciting again. I haven't forgot about XG. I still need to do Undefeated Reaction. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't heard the song yet. So, uh, I mean, I've heard things on like uh, IG Undefeated, you know, but like not anything yet. Uh, we were supposed to be on June Jizzle stream. I'm waiting for confirmation. See, I, I wanted this to be a warm up for the conversation. You should check it. Uh, if I have time, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind doing it right now if I have time. I just need to know if I have time. I would have to make a new YouTube, uh, stream. Watch the lyric vid. 
Is there actual for so for XG? Is there an actual video video? Are they in it, or is it just like a collaboration with uh, Valorant? By the way, speaking of Valorant, um, I've only played Valorant twice. I've also won twice. Jeez. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All the music videos are animated. Yeah, maybe we say I need to do an XG recap and I haven't finished um the documentary anyway. So let's stay in this uh hip hop civil war space for today, for today's stream, and then we can do XG stream. I wanna stream tomorrow too. I wanna get back into the swing of streaming. There's been a lot of just like hectic things happening in my life. So you know. But we're back now. So that's a ghoul. I'm looking for a short video that we can watch and because I'm I'm waiting to see if this is happening. This other streaming's happening. We I would raid out to uh their stream and then we would continue this discussion where I give you guys my real opinion on like who I got, whose side I'm on, you know. Kendrick is ready for oh uh, wait, Kendrick is ready, J. Cole is over. Don't count out Drake. Time to raid. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Buddy said he lost his... Uh, he's going through technical difficulties. So, like, I don't know if the, the stream is happening. Let me hit them up. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I did drop a new track. Nah, it's not time for that. Wait, what's the dirt? Five days ago, Kendrick is ready for J. Cole. Wait, Kendrick is ready. J. Cole is over. Don't count out Drake. Let's see what he said before... Uh, this is another we can't what's sit the back dirt. and just ignore the fact. This is another dirt. What's the dirt uh, video? J. Cole dissed Kendrick Lamar and then apologized. Mm. That shit disrupts my fucking peace. Mm. I was dumbfounded. I could not believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe it. Now, if this is J. Cole's choice, then so be it. He's a spiritual dude. If he wants to take the high road, then take the high road. But, but like, yeah, but exactly, bro. Like, yo, what's the dirt has been reading my mind? But like, why even fucking put out the diss track in the first place? Look at me. If you chose peace, why did you choose violence in the beginning, bro? You're letting your fans down. You're like, you know how J. Cole's a rabbit, 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 rabbit. J. Cole stands will defend him to the ends of the earth. But like, you got it. You're not making it easy for them, fam. But... We can't sit back and just ignore the fact that for over a decade, this man has been rapping about how he would destroy any rapper that came at him. Right. You know, how he'd kill your favorite MC. Right. Your favorite rapper neck in the noose, never letting them loose. All these rappers are afraid of him. I'm the one that niggas fear on the low ski. You niggas don't want smoke, no guts like that switcher we just smoke. Nobody better not ever test him. When I'm in LA, I'm the best in the West. You can test, you can test, I'ma stretch niggas out. He's done it his whole fucking career. Like, I can make a two-hour video of non-stop J. Cole bars where he's, he's talking like this. You want to shoot and shoot, don't play with me. Hardest shit out the South since slavery, nigga. I was about to say, man, damn, that's a hard-ass bar, but then I remember he apologized. It just takes the win out of all future bars. Like, I eat, live, and breathe this shit, guys. I love this rap shit. It's been that way. Holy shit, he's very intense. I, I, I think he eats, lives, and shit this rap shit, man. Hey, since I was nine years old. Tank, you know what I do? J. Cole are not hitting anymore. They're just not. They when we look nothing. at the groundwork that J. Cole has been laying in these recent years, it's extremely clear that he did not think this fucking thing through. Nope. I don't even think he meant to do this. I think he was just in his hometown and got overwhelmed by the love in the building and the energy and he just did this and now he regrets it. The reason why we all started to sway in J. Cole's favor is not because he's a nice guy. It's not because he could have... 10 cars and owns one or because he rides a bike it's because of the way he's been rapping yeah that's a good point it's never been about how humble j cole is when it comes to like not flaunting his wealth and not like going to decadent decadence or opulent things or like it's or even his crooked smile it's about 
the bars like he was saying that he would tear any MC apart limb from limb and he was putting on lyrical showcase after showcase especially when he went on the feature run that he did it was immaculate it was impeccable but when push came to shove when it was time to show and prove he tucked his tail and went home bro it's like they were on the court bro he got fouled a little bit and then he went aggressive like he fouled the dude back and then he took the ball and he's like hmm and now i'm going home that's like what j cole did bro he folded he folded he folded man it's a shame the things that he's been saying that's what made us fall in love with J. Cole in these recent years. And by apologizing to Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole just erased all that hard work. And this will act just like the ghostwriter allegations for Drake in the sense Yo, that good, this is going to follow him forever. Welcome in. I've received thousands of comments. True, his head got big. Like, it's okay if your head got big. Well, then, like... His head got big up until like two days after he dropped the track. And then like when people weren't feeling it, when there was mixed review about his diss track, his head got deflated and he's like, ooh, my bad. You gotta, you gotta keep going, bro. Like, it don't matter if you if it didn't feel right with your spirit, bro. You gotta think about your legacy. It'll feel uncomfortable for your spirit for like two days, sure. But like, I mean, if you if you can't stand on what you did. It's not like he was, like, out here robbing people or doing something immoral, right? Like, bro, you were just rapping. You, di you, didn't, even, you didn't even say anything, like, too tough to Kendrick Lamar. You said your arms ain't long enough to reach with a god? Or what else he said? What else he said? I can't even go back to the track because he deleted it, bro. Come on, man. Hey, yo, what'd I say? Comments about Drake and ghostwriting. Thousands. And it's going to be the same for J. Cole. <laughs> Cole hit skill based matchmaking. <laughs> oh, J. Cole was in the wrong lobby. <laughs> J. Cole won one game of Apex, Apex and they put him in Predator lobbies, bro. That's what happened. Like, he is Apex. never, ever going to get away from this. He's just not. However, this apology Fred. will prove to be a massive mistake because you can best believe that the MC in Kendrick Lamar has been ignited if you think kendrick is gonna roll over and just let this thing slide after that man took shots at his entire career yeah, his entire catalog you're fucking bugging he's coming you're this bugging. is what a golden opportunity looks like for kendrick to come in and finally separate himself oh. <laughs> from those two this is how it's done i'm really about this shit Kendrick will see bro hold on bro. what's the dirt looks like he's about to step in for J. Cole bro he's like I'm really about this shit I, I got bars for Kendrick bro the opportunity to double down and he will likely release something in the next few days it's not going to be light it's not going to be friendly and while he will have you do you guys actually think that Kendrick Lamar is dropping bro can I set up a poll real quick I haven't set up a poll in so long is K dot gonna drop this week? You guys think that he's gonna drop something this week? Yes. Nah. Uh, let's give it two minutes. What do you guys plenty think? of bars for J. Cole. I feel his next release will be far more personal. On the intro, Drake. you think you're gonna put I it on the intro? Kendrick be is fire. finally gonna come for Drake's fucking head. The clock is really ticking for Drake. It's his turn to move the chess piece. And if he doesn't put something out in the next few days, Kendrick is gonna have a whole other scheme to play here, which will act as a back to back moment. I think a Kendrick's going to gonna use moment. Drake's own angle against him. Oh, this and is he'll probably angle. even reference back to back while he does it. Now, I've been seeing people count Drake edit his thing entirely, and anyone with this take is making a major, major mistake. Look, if you're a fan of battle rap at all, you already know when it comes to this part of the genre, mm -hmm. battling, it's not all about how many syllables or double entendres Bruce that you can jam pause. into your rhyme scheme. <laughs> is that a world tour or your girl's tour? <laughs> really simple, right? I mean, it's literally a one-syllable piece up but very effective.
And he used little lines like that to destroy Meek Mill. Trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Very simple. Two-syllable piece up, but simple, but effective. Drake is really good at doing shit like that. He's very, very witty. Yes. People seem to forget that Drake is a massive battle rap fan. The man studies battle rap. He's the only battle-tested artist of the three, and he's been sparring with people for his whole career. Drake has literally been battling with people before he was even signed. If you're going to sit there and count Drake out this entirely, like he has zero chance, that just tells me that you really haven't been paying attention, and it's obvious that you really don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because Damn, he definitely bro. does have a chance. And you can feel free to come back to this video. Now, back to J. Cole. At This, this video ended, well, 50-50, one apiece, huh? Okay. Point, he lost. Even if Kendrick doesn't respond, he lost. Even if 10 years down the road, he wants to go at Kendrick, he can't do it. He, he lost. J. Cole seemed to think that showcasing that he can out-rap someone on a feature is a form of clock in a W. And while I would agree that it is, out rapping people like Little Yachty is not really a flex. Yeah. We all love the energy he was coming with. He Damn, Little Yachty just caught it straight for no reason, bruh. Oh, did you guys hear the uh the reference track for Jumbotron shit? We can watch that too. He was setting himself up beautifully to take the crown and then completely self-sabotaged. At this point, J. Cole needs to pretty much reinvent himself. Because the shit he's been talking for over a decade, the angles that he's been using in his music, is not believable anymore. Personally, I do not want to hear any more goat talk, any more I'll kill your favorite rapper talk, any more don't test me talk. Stop it. And I love the EP. I must have played J. Cole's new EP a hundred times. That's what this video was supposed to be about. I was going to take that EP and break down all the disses in it. But now today, it's like... I don't even want to talk about it. Like, to me, it's not even worth talking about. Yeah. It's over. It's a wrap. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. It came across my feet. Edit. Good to see it edited correctly. Here, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Oh, he got a... Damn, he got a... Uh-huh. Say what? Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Is this guy Vix? What's the dirt? I don't know. But 10 most lethal subliminal disses explained. The Hold good you. old sneak dick. Hold on, four weeks ago? Let's watch this. Let's tee it up. Fanboy, push me in a place to be. Today, yo, I've been watching Watch the Dirt's YouTube channel. It's like my new favorite YouTube channel when it comes to this hip hop civil war that we find ourselves in. Uh, he has a new video, Drake's 10. Most lethal subliminal disses. Can it be lethal and subliminal at the same time? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's get it. How was that intro? Was it good? Was it you guys you guys mess with that intro? Huh? I'm gonna edit this part out. Don't even worry about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually do this and I don't care. The good old sneak diss has become synonymous in hip hop. Rather than call your opponent out directly, do it in a slick way to get your message across. True. MCs like Jay-Z truly mastered the art of doing this, and he would influence upcoming rappers like Drake. And that's what this video is about. We're going to take 10 sneak disses from Drake, and we're going to break them down. Track one, Do Not Disturb. You overnight celebrity, you one day star, swear I told you that I'm in this bitch for eternity. Oh, you one day star, this is about day star, uh, what's his last, I don't know his last name, you know, you guys remember, uh, the dude, the dude, the dude, what's his name, what's his name, what's his name, what's his name, holy, he's in jail for shooting, the, the shooting, the shooting, the foot, the foot, the good foot. What's his name? I forgot. Oh no, there's no way. I was trolling, but I like actually forgot his name, Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez, that's his name. Holy, that guy. Uh. In this one, Drake takes a shot at fellow Toronto artist Tory Lanez, and for such few words, there's a lot packed into this. Drake starts out by calling Tory an overnight celebrity, alluding to the fact that Tory's career was really just getting started. He then calls Tory a one-day star, and not only is Tory's government name Daystar <laughs> Peterson, but he also had a track called One Day. 
Drake then puts great emphasis on the words, I told you, which was the name of Tori's debut album. Now, the reason why Drake dissed Master him in the me. first place was all... What a masterclass of so, a sneak dissing, bro. Like, there's so much packed into that simple rhyme cadence and scheme. Good for you, Drake. Brought on by Tori himself. Tori spent a good portion of his career begging for Drake's attention, and when he didn't get it, he started dissing. Now, there's a good chance that Drake never expected Tori's career to get as big as it did, and he certainly didn't want to shine any sort of light on his career, so he went with a subliminal shot instead. Track 2, No Lie. Oh, that look like what's the name? Chances are it is what's the name? In this one, Drake had a subliminal shot for none other than Rihanna. Right off rip, really? Drake makes reference to their collaborative track, What's My Name. Oh. He continues on to say that she was basically a hit and run, fucking Chuck type of girl. Like he says that, but like this is why this is why when ASAP Rocky responded to him on that uh, Metro Boomin' Boomin' Future track, it was so it was so much more impactful because not only did he say he smashed your girl, your baby mama, uh, before you did, and you birthed a child with her, he has the girl of your dreams that you are now saying that's not not big a deal but we we see through that drake you 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 know you want a rihanna bro it's okay everyone wants rihanna but asap one and he had the nerve he had a bar uh he said that you're stuck with her now or whatever but like rihanna's a billionaire like you're stuck with a a, <laughs> a european porn star if i'm not mistaken mm. which one would i rather be stuck with i don't know just me though, the billion. Chances off she was acting up and I fucked her once and never fucked again. Drake then makes the reference that he doesn't really care about the quality of her star power and that in his eyes, Definitely she's a just a regular player. chick. He gets this across by pointing out that even though she has Grammys, which she had five at the time, he wasn't really that impressed. She could have a Grammy, I still treat her ass like a nominee. He ends off the line by saying that fucking her one time was more than enough for him. Just need to know what that pussy like, so one time is fine with me. Which is a huge crock of shit because Drake is still to this day making Bruh. records about Rihanna. Thank you. What's like a the decade dirt? later. You Track see? three, Six God. You was popping back when I should wore you change. Goddamn, you change. In this one, Drake takes a shot at Southern OG Ludacris. Drake's tension with Luda goes way back to 2009 when Drake claimed that Ludacris was stealing flows. On Six God, Drake alludes to the fact that Ludacris is fu- Wait, 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 Drake can't allude to anybody stealing flows. He stole Big Sean's flow. He he stole the Migos flow. Uh, he hops on everybody's, like, hot track, all the up-and-coming tracks. Like, Drake is the hip-hop succubus, bro. Like, all he does is steal from people. But what's, what flow did Luda steal? Falling off and hasn't been seen much since his feature on Usher's big track, Yeah. So give me the rhythm and it'll be off with they close. Track four, I'm on one. Wait, also, before we get off of Ludacris, but like, uh, in Ludacris' defense, he's out there making superhero racing movies, right? The Fast series. Like, he got paid like what? He's getting paid like what, like 50 million? Uh, not 50 million, like 50 million total for those movies. I think he's fine, bro. Ludacris out here, like he has dual shit citizenship in Africa out there, bro, living his best life, bro. Leave a little alone. Just feeling like the throne is for the taking. I'm on one, it's one of my favorite tracks. Watch me tell Back in 2011, oh, Kanye oh, and Jay Z okay. announced that they were doing a joint album called Watch the Throne. Drake seemed to believe that they stole that idea as there were plans made for a joint Drake and Lil Wayne project. You know, that, we still gotta do that album. Yes, yes, you still gotta do heard that some album. other guys are coming out with that album, too. Just, just... Look, look, look at him. I, I heard some other guys are coming out with that album, too. You know, it was my idea, but, you know, you know, people just steal from me because I'm Drake, you know. I'm the, I'm the best, you know, I'm the, I'm the best, so, you know, they take ideas from me, you know, they do it before me, so, you know, it's like they did it first, I don't know, man. There's two other guys that are coming out okay. together. Two other rappers that are coming out with an album together. I don't know where they got that idea, but. It's like, oh, two rappers never came together and make an album, it's like crazy. It's crazy that, like, two, two rappers never thought 
Wait, wait, zoom in, zoom in on me. It's crazy that two rappers never thought to come together and like do 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 an album together. You know, like I'm I'm Drake, so you know, like I breathe and it's creative. You know, so you know people got breathing for me. I'm because I'm Drake. You know, I'm from the six 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 six. Fucking guy, man. This fucking guy. Didn't they clown him on Scoop Diddy Poop? They definitely did, Zyber. They definitely did. Tito G, what's good? Sorry, bro. bro, it's just sassy as fuck. His tone is bad. Your language, everything is just sass. Shout Look, out to Drake. Drake, though. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, bro. Oh, but no. You weren't the first person to come up with the idea of a fucking joint album. This has been a concept in music for a really long time now. In the line, Drake sends a shot at Jay-Z and Kanye to state that the throne is his for the taking and that he's coming for the number one. Although I will give in Drake defense, he did take the throne. So like, uh, yeah, at least he did. He said what he did and he did what he said. You know? one spot i respect it because he did what he said he was gonna do i mean in my opinion at one point drake did take the throne he he did have it he track five it, club opinion. paradise couple artists got words for me that's never fun they say it's all when they see me that they don't ever come this line is directed at philly legend beanie siegel <laughs> beanie Wait. felt like jay-z was sending shots on drake's record light me up and threatened to slap drake when he saw Wait, Beanie Seagull had dr Drake beef? Bro, Be Beanie Seagull, I don't know what happened to him, but, like, he can't speak anymore. Like, he lost his voice. You and him are the same guy, apparently. Who, me? Me, me and Beanie Seagull, because we're fat and we're black? Come on, man. Beanie Seagull isn't even... Beanie Sing Seagull. Seagull isn't even fat anymore. What do you mean? Jin Beanie Seagull. Beanie felt like Jay-Z was sending shots on Drake's record, Light Me Up, and threatened to slap he Drake when he saw him. Oh. Oh, Drake and I'm practicing. I'm gonna tell you. Wait, me and this YouTuber are the same guy? Are we white? Am I white? Oh, damn, I just got sad. Mm. Y'all little fucking fuck something. Y'all keep letting that nigga get on y'all records and pop shit. I'm gonna start coming at y'all little niggas. Smack the shit out of Drake, bitch ass. <laughs> All y'all niggas. Yo. <laughs> Wait, Big Rocker, I didn't know either, bro, apparently. But, like, what's up with Philly rappers, bro? Why are they so aggressive for no reason, bro? Like, they be aggressive as fuck and do nothing, bro. Like, like Philly rappers, bro, we get it. You're not from New York. You're not from L.A. You're from Philly. We get it. We get it. In the line, Drake states that most of these rappers are full of shit. They talk a bit. Will Smith. Well, no, you're right. You're right. Will Smith is a, the only Philly rapper that actually stood on business. And, you know, you know, he in front of the world stage, in front of all these good white folks, smack their shit. Smack. Smack. So he, he didn't smack Chris Wright. He smited him, bro, in front of all these good white folks, bro. You're right. Will Smith is the only Philly rapper, I fear. Mm -mm. Big game, but they have more bark than bite. I'm never scared, they never real, I never run. When all is said and done, more is always said and done. Dre claims that he's not afraid of Beanie's threats and claims that Beanie is just talking and really won't do shit. I mean, if there's one rapper who's gonna, <laughs> if he's got the opportunity to slap the shit out of you and he's gonna do it, it'd be Beanie Siegel. Track six, draft oh, maybe day. I miss something. Just hits, no misses. That's for the married folks. In this one, Drake takes a shot at Jay Z. At the time, Drake had some disrespectful comments about Hove in a Rolling Stone. Can we now consider Will Smith as a gangster rapper? I think he was always, bro, considered as a gangster rapper, bro. Welcome to Miami. Come on, y'all didn't get jiggy with it. He was saying Jiggy before ASAP Rock. He said he was the Jiggy nigga. Come on, man. An interview. Mm -mm. It's like Hove can't drop bars these days without at least four art references. I'd love to collect art at some point, but I think the whole rap art world thing is getting kind of corny. And Drake said that? Something getting corny? Drake said? Come on, Drake. Come on, man. I'm, I'm trying to be on Drake's side, but he's making it hard for people. Summer, summer, summertime. 
Got them Glocks, got them straps, got them nines. Sinayota, what's good, man? And it was due to those remarks that Jay-Z dropped the freestyle dissing Drake. Sorry, Mr. Drizzy, put so much out talk. Silly me, <laughs> rapping about shit that I really bought. So I don't know if you caught that, but he calls him Mrs. Drizzy. And that's what Drake alluded to that. on draft day when he says, just hits, no misses. That's for the married folk. At the time, Hove was getting a lot of mixed reviews on his Magna Carta album, where a lot of people didn't like. What y'all think about Magna Carta, Holy Grail, bro? That that song with, and baby, do, 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 I just give. Bro, Justin Timberlake, bro. Ew. Although Justify was cool, his solo album, that was really good. But uh, that was Pharrell's uh, production, right? The Neptunes are Pharrell specifically and that album was meant for michael jackson the production so that's why it's so good so take it with a grain of salt like it after that album many people were saying that it was time for jay-z to retire and drake makes it clear that he doesn't have any issues making hits wait 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 wait. tito g just said it's hard to defend drake when his this is sound more like complaints rather than reasonable digs <laughs> you, you, so it's hard to defend drake when it sounds like drake wants to see your manager bro like he wants to see a supervisor that's how his bars sound like holy holy bro that is crazy also i have i have one phone right here i have uh, two phone right here add i got three phones hello hello who's this oh drake complaining again oh yeah that's for you but anyway this is honestly the coolest thing that i've received on this channel extra sent me their parliament wallet in Safan psych numbers and which which are again for sponsor my channel track 7 6 p.m in new york it's so child is calling my name on a world stage you need to act your age and not, not your girl's age. age this line is directed at tyga Hello? and his oh. relationship with his much younger girlfriend kylie jenner in a yeah can we talk about that for a second how did tyga get away with that how did tyga get away with that like she was underage, nobody batted an eye. <sighs> Tiger, bro. Hey yo, what the fuck? What, 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 what? Uh. By magazine, Tiger took shots at Drake, saying. I don't really get along with Drake. I don't like Drake as a person. He's just fake to me. And this will be what Drake meant when he said, call him my name on the world stage. Track eight, summer 16. Are you boys in a new Toronto wanna be me a little? Shrug. This line is another shot at Tory Lanez who had released a mixtape called The New Toronto. Tory would then remix Drake's song Controla. And in terms of creating a really dope Caribbean style song, he did a far better job with this beat than Drake. Yeah. No way for the thing she a push bonnet, but I'm on it, shut it up on it, come broken down it, baby, I'm on it. And Drake seemingly wasn't that impressed was with Tory's use of the beat, and while performing Summer 16 at a live show, he changed the lyrics to that line to make it even more obvious. All you boys who are fake control and wanna be me a little. Damn. So instead of going, all you boys in the new Toronto, he switches it to all you boys doing fake controller track nine Damn. can't have everything finally got my mind in a free state niggas try to serve me up a cheese steak i gave him back a clean place long after drake put meek in his place with back to back the subliminal shots continued and on this track he dishes out another one he starts out the line by saying that he's finally got his mind in a free state which is a reference to Meek's state of philadelphia which was the first state to pass a law that abolished slavery. I didn't even know he that. He then mentions how dudes tried to serve him up a cheesesteak, which is obviously a well-known Philadelphia sandwich. <laughs> what is that? Wait, 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 wait. What is that still of fucking Meek Mill, bro? Like, look at this big-ass stupid MMG chain. Holy. This is the picture that Diddy saw, and Diddy's like, I like that. I like that, daddy. That's what Diddy said, bro. And then nothing was the same. Known Philadelphia sandwich. 
He ends off the line to say that he gave him back a clean plate, alluding to how he ate Meek alive when it came to this. Hey, yo. Beef. Y'all dudes is arrogant. Y'all stay at the Sheridan. Oh, that shit's embarrassing. Drake fucking smoke. Yeah, that was really bad. Also, what's wrong with the Sheridan? Uh, I don't got Drake money. Sheridan's a good, clean establishment. Smoke that record. Track 10, used to. Real quick, man, you couldn't have hated that. Let's be real, nigga, you couldn't have made it that. Woo! This line is a shot for none other than P. Diddy. Hey, 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 you better leave Diddy alone. He'll take your manhood. He'll take your manhood. He'll have you in a freak off. You better leave him alone. That, you see this? This is a glare. This is the stare of a booty killer, bro. Allegedly. 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 I don't make it to work tomorrow. My Uber blows up. Diddy was pissed off over the 0 to 100 beat and claimed that he had it first and that Drake stole it. The whole thing allegedly even sparked a scuffle between the two outside of a nightclub in Miami. Drake starts off the line by saying real quick, which is a reference to the 0 to 100 track. We go 0 to 100 nigga real okay. quick. Drake goes on to say you couldn't have hated that, alluding to how he took the beat and made it a banger. He ends off the line to say, let's be real, you couldn't have made it that, alluding to how if P. Diddy had the beat, it would have basically went to waste as there's no way he could have made an anthem like Drake did. And look, I know there's a lot more subliminals to cover, but we already did the Kendrick video with all those disses. Oh, we and there's watch the Pusha shit, like which tons of good subliminals. But again, so many people have covered that on YouTube. I don't think I'm going to do it because I like to try and find topics that are less common like in, in this case i feel like a lot of these subliminals i just showed you guys are less common ones than what's on youtube the guy did a good job he did, he did a good job with that it came across my feet it. good to see it edited yo that's a w outro bro we're in the joe budden podcast arguably the top podcast for hip-hop i almost said an r&b for some reason <laughs> is r&b still a thing but that when that's your outro that's amazing yo shout out to Joe Button Butt podcast and shout out to What's the Dirt, bro? W video. Did you guys know about those subliminal disses by Drake? I knew about them, but but like maybe I it wasn't like I didn't register them at the time. But like, yeah, W channel, W channel, W channel. Very informative. You can tell What's the Dirt is really passionate about this. So yeah, but let me know you guys comments below. Like, please go check out What's the Dirt's channel for all the hip-hop goodness it's been your local friendly neighborhood fanboy see you in the next one he has a better outro than me you didn't know about the last one the last one zero to 100 the philly cheese a well-known beat oh and yeah no. the bank with all those dishes. i didn't know the last one no i don't know if i'm gonna Post that on YouTube. This might just be exclusively for the uh for the YouTube dumb, you know, for the man dumb. What about the next one? I don't know about the next one, man. I don't know about the next one. But I am going to end the YouTube stream right now. So goodbye, YouTube. It's been a pleasure. This is gonna be available, hot, fresh, sealed, delivered for the, you know. For whom? For whom you ask for the for the for the mendem <laughs> for the membership memdem. Alright. Bye YouTube.